didn't see things sooner than most people. Uh, I think you saw sooner than most that computers could talk to each other. They could send data back and forth. And you also realize this could be done far less expensively, more efficiently, on digital towers, microwave towers, than on the AT&T analog system. Well, this didn't cheer up the people at AT&T at all. And uh, they fought you at every opportunity. They fought you at the Federal Communications Commission, but you won. They fought you in the Congress, but you won. But then they blocked your financing and they killed ATRAN. You spent eight years and $100 million lost because of AT&T, so you sued them and you won again. Do you think that this suit laid the groundwork for the ultimate breakup of the Bell system? This is the old Bell system. This isn't the nice A&T run by Randall Stevenson in Dallas today. I want to make that very clear. Uh, <laughs> if he's listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, uh, um, the company that's AT&T is one of eight pieces of the old um, uh, telephone monopoly. AT&T is not a monopoly. We see that on TV where the Verizon says we talk to more people, AT&T says we talk to more people, and there's several other competitors who are, who are offering telephone services, cell phone services, uh, you know, bandwidth for your computer and all this stuff. And they, um, what used to be a single telephone monopoly has to compete with satellite companies and compete with cable companies. So there's a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of communications going on in what was um, a total monopoly. And um, that um, original monopoly was built for uh, people to talk to people, for a voice service. Um, and it, it had an analog plan. An analog just fine for people talking to people. But the computer um, is digital. And um, it um, had trouble with the analog plan. You get more errors, you get, you get more cost. And, uh, Basically, we said um, what we need is a, a telephone company for computers, and uh, you can't just build it uh, from Dallas to Houston. You've got to build it nationwide because everybody in um, Pomona has got to talk to everybody in Philadelphia, and Philadelphia has got to talk to Dallas, so it can't be just point to point. It's got to be from everywhere to everywhere. Um, in other words, it's not a network. So um, um, turns out it took more than the original $1,000 that I started with, <laughs> they're the oh, original yeah. 650 that we got. Or, and um, basically the tab was going to be when we had got it all designed, um, 375 million bucks, which would be about, um, I think about, uh, four, about, about, four, about four times that in today's dollars. Um, so, um, but actually um, at the time when we, were, when we had started universe computing and um, We'd grown our profit at 100% a year, and the, and the gods of Wall Street had smiled on us, and you could capitalize all sorts of things that were in the technology space and that um, had the hope of great growth. So um, when we um, um, filed for our charter, we had to basically go bust up the monopoly, and you started with the Federal Communications Commission. Um, uh, the markets were there, and uh, maybe you could have capitalized it. The markets were kind of like later when we had the dot-com. Well, you were about to capitalize it. It's just that AT&T leaned on your financiers and said, if you do business with Wiley, we won't do business with you. Isn't that what happened? Yeah, they played dirty. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. First, maybe if I had a monopoly, I'd have done the same thing. <laughs>